Amazing new time zone and reality, everyone. My name is Vel here at Siren Sway, and today is a DIY-esque video. Back in May, my grandma came to visit and she decided we'd plant some strawberries. So of course we got some strawberries, but these were different. They were hanging strawberries, meaning they're supposed to be hanging off of something because they have vines for the strawberries to grow on. And we didn't want to screw into the deck. That's about the only place where we could hang something from. So I decided to make a plant hanger. And I thought, well, before I make something entirely, I'll just go to Thingiverse. I went to Thingiverse and found a clamp and a plant hanger. My idea was I was going to clamp the whole base to the deck that we have and then hang the strawberries off the hook part. This way we can always adjust it or use it for something else entirely. So of course I went to Thingiverse and got these two models, made modifications to them in Tinkercad so I could have some screw holes and that didn't really work. It was too short. The whole base of the pot is about 10 inches. I needed it to stick out from the deck about five inches. That's the middle point of the pot. So when, it's, so when it would hang from the deck, it wouldn't be tilting or leaning against it. Yeah, that wasn't really working. So of course, I decided to try something else. Instead of just taking two models and modifying them, I decided to make them myself. So I actually have a video process of this. So let's go ahead and get into that. All right, so now we're at Tinkercat. I'm going to be making my own pieces for the plant hanger. I took some measurements of the two by six, I believe my dad called it, that I'm gonna be putting this base on. It's about one and a half, nope, <laughs> an inch and a half thick. And then the hook part of the plant is half of an inch thick. So I made sure that the base part could slip over the two by six. That was my dad's idea. Since the clamp wasn't gonna work, it was way too short. Since the pot is about 10 inches in diameter, I needed to go at least five inches, which is about half of that. So when it hangs, it's, it's touching the deck, but it's not leaning. Once I had the hole cut out, I decided to make some little cutouts for the screws. I was gonna be using one eighth of an inch screws in diameter. And I, I need to make sure that the holes are slightly bigger than that because I'm not making these threaded holes when I 3D print this. They're just holes, they're not threaded at all. I don't wanna deal with that because I couldn't remember if these were metric screws or not, if they're imperial. And then I didn't know what the size was gonna be like per se. So I was like, you know, we'll just make some holes. And because of that, I need to be able to put a nut at the end of the screw so I could hold it in place. That's why you see these rectangle slash hexagon shapes in the middle of my base. This is so I can access the underside of the hole and put a screw, a nut in place. This way I can hold it. And I thought, you know, I'll, I'll use this, but other people may use it too. So I made sure to, of course, make sure they were all equal, but then also have some adjustable holes. Now, if you're wondering why I didn't print it all as one big thing, it's because my printer bed is only about four inches wide all the way around. It's about, well, but my print, my build area anyway is four inches wide all around. So I'm limited by four inches. That's why I'm gonna be making three parts of this. Right now, the green part is the hook. So the idea is to be able to screw in the hook part on top with a nut on, underneath. And then the blue part is the wedge because if I just have the green hook on the red base, there's gonna be some stress points from where the plant is gonna be hanging. So I added some wedges to add st some stability and make it a little more sturdy. And of course I made sure everything was lined up at Tinkercad. I added these little wedges to the hooks, even in the holes where the nuts are gonna go. This way it's one easier to 3D print, but two, it has just a little bit more stability. And of course we'll see some design changes later on, but for now, I think I finished everything, made sure the holes were correct and lined up on the wedge. And we're gonna go ahead and start printing these. Now, I only have footage of recording the wedge because the wedge took about four hours and two minutes. Originally, I was not gonna record any of the 3D printing process because the base part took about 14 hours and around 20 something minutes. And then the hook took six hours and 39 minutes. So the wedge being the smaller of the two for time, I thought, you know, I'll record a little bit of it. Not the whole thing because my computer's already low on space with all the products I'm recording at the moment. So I thought, you know what, this will be a good way to do it. But I did make sure to print all of them, don't worry. And I printed them all in different colors. I printed the base in yellow, the wedge in a light green, and then the hook in a darker forest kind of green. I thought having the slight gradient effect would be kind of cool, even though it's not a complete gradient, it's slightly there. <laughs> and no, I did not add countersinks to the wedge, but I did add it 
to the hook part. That way the screws would sink in a little bit. The countersink is a little part that dips around the hole. I didn't wanna bother trying to do that with the wedge because I wasn't sure how to do it because it's a slanted angle. I was like, yeah, you know, it's not too important. I don't really care about looks. I'm more of a functionality person. If it functions, I don't necessarily care how it looks too much. As long as it holds and it works and it does what it's supposed to do, that's literally all that matters to me. And of course I'm printing on my new glass bed, which I'll talk about in a later video. And I'm quite happy with the glass bed I got. It works really well. There are a lot of clamps on it, you know, like little paperclip holders, but all in all, it works great. Now you can see I struggled with trying to get the print off the bed is because I had about three layers of glue on it. So something I saw you could do was you can take a frozen bag of, you know, fruits or vegetables or whatever out of the freezer and put your print on top. This is of course what I did because I want to take it off easy, but it wasn't working. The first two times I did this with previous prints, it did work. I was able to pop them off really easy, but it wasn't working. So I decided, you know what? I'll pop it in the freezer for about five to 10 minutes and hopefully it pops off. And of course it's time to take it out after five to 10 minutes in the freezer. I'd probably just say five or 10 is good. Not, you don't need to do longer unless it's like a really big print maybe. But once I did that, it just popped off really easy. And you saw me struggle with it, but it just popped off like it was nothing as if there was no glue whatsoever. But that's because I didn't scrape off the glue from the previous two prints, which was the hook and base. But of course, now that they're finally off the bed, it's time to sand them. I made sure to sand all the holes, all the edges, and the holes where I could access the underside of the holes. This way everything was nice and smooth. And then once I sanded everything, I made sure to wash all the dust off. There was quite a bit. I personally like to use warm water, but that's not at all necessary. You can use cold water, it doesn't matter as long as you wash all the dust off, make sure the edges are clean and smooth. I also made sure to wash off my tools and my mat. I like using, it's called a healing mat, I believe. This just makes it easier to remove the dust from the workspace instead of having it go all over my workspace. It's just nice to wash it all down the train. <laughs> And of course I wrapped my print like a burrito to dry it off. This is not at all necessary, but it's just really fun to wrap your print like a burrito and dry it off. <laughs> and then make sure all the holes were nice and dry. I got some Q-tips and just cleaned it out. Look at that. All right, so now that everything is dusted off and cleaned, it is time to assemble them all. Now. I had two screws from my previous prints and I was using that and I only had two screws. I forgot there's a third hole now. And I tried some different screws that was not working. I tried to find some spares. I didn't actually have any screws. So my dad and I ended up going to Home Depot or like our second home at this point. <laughs> we went to Home Depot, got some screws and we got quite a bit actually. We had measured it, I even brought it with me and I only ended up using the one inch and inch and a half screws for the whole thing, even though I had about some three eighths of an inch screws, but that's fine. After that, this is what it looked like. And I was quite happy with it. I was so proud. It took a long time to print and I had to go get, actually get some screws. Cause like I said, we had some spare screws, but these are random screws over the years. The problem with that is you don't know if you're gonna find the exact same screw in the exact same size and find a nut that will fit it. And I couldn't, I had a problem with that. And then I noticed something when I tested it. The hook would not fit. So the hook is half of an inch thick. Problem? The hole is half of an inch thick. It's too snug. So of course that meant I had to reprint the hook, but I also noticed my base had about six or seven holes. I don't need those holes because my hook only has four holes. So I decided to not only reprint the hook, but reprint the base with not as many holes and widen the holes and reprint the wedge. <sighs> Back to the drawing board. Uh, no, I mean 3D board. So once again, I sanded all my prints. 
I, re I decided to just reprint everything. So I made the hook bigger. I made sure to modify the holes to the base because I found out that even though you can use pliers to hold the nuts in place, it was actually really hard to get my small pliers to actually fit inside the hole and just hold it there. And the holes are a little too small for my fingers. So I made the holes bigger, but made sure that it would still be sturdy enough to hold the weight of a plant. I kind of guesstimated the plant would be about five pounds, maybe 10 pounds with water in it. So I wanna make sure that edge wouldn't be too weak. So once again, I sanded all the holes, sanded all the little bits, sanded all the edges, and I actually added countersinks to the wedge this time. And I washed everything, absolutely everything, all the tools, the board, there was so much PLA dust, oh my gosh. And then once that was done, it was time to assemble it again. It was so much easier to hold the nuts in place with the pliers. It worked great having the holes bigger. And here we go, it fits. Another problem that was happening was the yellow wedge was just a little too tight. And we'll talk about that in a second. Yay. <laughs> now see, if it was upright, it would hold it a little farther. It's, it's down a little, it's leaning. See that? No. So I think I'd rather have it tighter. Perhaps what you could do is glue something onto the loose side. See, the thing is, it's not even, it's like a nail um, thick that I would have to add. So there we go, it holds. It actually fits over the two by six or two by four. And it holds the plant. You can see right now, I'm just holding it. And it slips over pretty easily. But like I said, the yellow base was actually too tight. Well, now this base is a little too big. So I'm just gonna be talking over some of these pictures. Enjoy that. So the hook is actually big enough. And at the time, I only measured these with a tape measure. And I had to go and I was like, why are some of these things not fitting? Well, my dad got me a caliper, which is a dig digital measurer. And I found out that the two by four is not technically an inch and a half thick. It's one point. 47 inches an inch and a half would be 1.50 so this is this is three what do you call these <laughs> centimeters or millimeters I call them mini inches it's it's about three mini inches off from being one and a half of course when you first buy two by fours or two by sixes this plank of wood it probably was actually an inch and a half but we've had this deck for gosh this deck's been around for ages it's older than me, so maybe 20 years or so. I'm just guesstimating here. So because of that, between all the moisture and the heat and everything, it shrunk a little bit. So because of that, my yellow base was 1.45 inches. So of course that's two little inches too small to fit around. That's why it was so snug. But then my actual base was 1.52. That's like two little little inches above one and a half that's why it's too big i'd rather have it snug than it being too big so i may later down the line reprint that right now it doesn't matter too much to me so you saw i had to reprint the whole thing right yeah so i measure the hook with a caliper the hook is 0 0.53 inches that's a that's about three little inches over one and a half and remember, when I say little inches, I'm not talking about a full inch, I'm talking about under the decimal point. So I measured my other two hooks. Of course, my light green hook was 0 0.75, nope, 0 0.73 inches. So it was really big, but I didn't mind it being that big. And then the first hook with the yellow base was about 0 0.49 inches, which is too small for the plant hook. And the full green hook is 0 0.61 inches. Again, that's a little bit on the bigger side, but it doesn't matter because the plant hood plant hook actually fits. So having a caliper is definitely really nice. I definitely enjoy being able to measure things really accurately, especially since I'm a perfectionist. So this definitely helps and I really enjoy it. But yeah, that was the process for my plant hook. I hope you enjoyed it. The files for this will be available on Tinkercad, so you can modify it for your needs, whether it needs to be a bigger gap to hang off of or a smaller gap, or the hook size needs to be bigger or smaller, or if you just need to add more holes, whatever your need is, the plant 
the files will be available on Tinkercad, but also on Thingiverse, possibly my mini factory, and maybe another place. We'll see. And of course, I have photos right here of the finished product, or more so, all three of them next to each other. The first one is my first attempt with two models I found off of Thingiverse. Links will be in the description below. They are good models, it just didn't work for what I was using it for. And of course, you can see the second one with all of the colors. And the last one, I decided to just make it one uniform color, and I'm really happy with it. Even though the three colors do look nice, it it just looks better to me having it all one color. It's a nice forest green, so it matches and fits in with the plants. And yes, it is bent a little bit. I've been leaving it out there to test if it could hold the weight of the strawberry plant, which I know in the video it's dead because we had tons of hail and it's been over 90 degrees and then more hail and more 90 degree weather Fahrenheit. So a lot of our plants actually died, but they're slowly coming back. So there's hope for these yet. But yeah, I've been leaving it out there for I think maybe a week now. So it's a little bent from the heat and the weight, but it's holding up. So I'm really happy with it. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and this whole process of making and designing my plant hanger. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching. Bye.